go. We are all teachers. Gandhi said it best. He said, my life is my teaching. And when you contemplate that, you really think about it. What are we teaching with our lives? With our lives. With the way we respond to life as we wake up in the morning, as we go through our day. What legacy are we leaving? What is our teaching? Our, my life is my teaching. All of our lives are our teaching. And the people who are around us and live with us and work with us and love us are being taught by us for good, for bad, or indifferent. I just thought it'd be a good thing to be aware of. <laughs> because we all love our loved ones. That's why we call them loved ones, right? And we want to, we want to leave a beautiful imprint on this earth when we leave, don't we? And so it starts with our life. My life is my teachings. So in May, we tend to enjoy and honor and look at what the feminine brings in forms of our mothers, but I think we can spread it out a little bit more than that. Do you know, um, those of you who are raised Catholic would know because um, the Master Mary, also known as the Mother Mary, she celebrated quite a bit in the month of May. <clears throat> but did you know that she's also very active? One of the reasons is, and I wonder which became which, which was first. Do you know that she has, um, working with her, a legion of angelic beings called the Sisters of Light? And the Sisters of Light uh, work with uh, Kuan Yin also, and the Master Mary, and especially in May, they move through <coughs> the earth, and for the women, who are expecting children, they do a special blessing. Did you know that? And it happens, of course, throughout uh, other times throughout the year, because she doesn't do it just do in May, because some of the babies would miss that blessing. But it's, <laughs> it, it's done specifically, uh, very strongly, maybe. I, and I think the reason, aha, uh -huh, I just understood, um, because we are receptive to her blessings in May, because we know May is the mother month. And so at other times she does it as well. It's really, really important in this May to honor and look at how the feminine is treated on the planet because we're not moving, we're not going anywhere, men or women, until we learn to honor the equality of women. Now, I'm preaching to the choir, you know, I know. But I'm saying it, I'm preaching to the camera. <laughs> because um, it really is an issue that we should all be passionate about. Do something to make sure women are honored and protected. And so in my little way, what I like to do is, those of you who do yoga with us, I have a couple classes called Metaphysics and Masters. And so I like to bring in the consciousness of some of the saints or masters or initiates or the energy of the day. And uh, last week, I, uh, I brought in Pema Chodron. We talked about Wisak last Sunday. And uh, so I chose Pema. She's a beautiful, beautiful soul. She's an American who is a Buddhist monk. And she has incredible consciousness. If you've never read her, any of her books, compassion and love, and yet she's very, very practical. And so I brought a couple of her thoughts so that we could sort of feel the power and the wisdom of the divine feminine because feminine it is also, you know, when someone has said they're feminine, it kind of has the implication of uh, soft or uh, gentle or, you know, maybe even physically speaking attractive. And I think that's kind of very limiting. Feminine is a full expression of the magnetic aspect of source. And it feels, in other words, source is magnetic, meaning it draws us to itself through the power of its love. And that we call the divine feminine. The masculine, which we'll celebrate next month, is the outbreath or the dynamic aspect of source. 
So when we talk about mother, father, God, we're talking about those two energies that have, that have propel creation and draw it back to itself so we all go home and remember who we are. So these are very down-to-earth and very feminine and powerful thoughts from these wisdom leaders. And this one, Pema. She said, people get into a heavy-duty sin and guilt trip. Nah, not us, right? <laughs> Feeling that if things are going wrong, that means they did something bad and they are being punished. Old energies, we talk about that a lot, right? That's not the idea at all. The idea of karma, and this is good, listen. The idea of karma is that you continually get the teachings that you need to open your heart. So look, it's, there's a, isn't that a beautiful way of looking at what we're going through right now? They're the teachings we need to open our heart. And especially even if someone is mad at us or upset with us or they think we did something wrong, and we always say, well, there, what's wrong with them? You know, These are the teachings to open my heart. To the degree that you didn't understand in the past how to stop protecting your soft spot, how to stop armoring your heart, you're given this gift of teachings in the form of your life to give you everything you need to open further. That's just said so sweet, and that just hits it. Just everything is given what given to us to bring us to that place to open further. And that's why we're here. To open and open and open. Because when the heart is open, the love is flowing. And when the love is flowing, the channel is blessed by that which flows through it. And we become the love. And one more thought from her. Feelings like disappointment, embarrassment, irritation, resentment, anger, jealousy, and fear, instead of being bad news, are actually very clear moments that teach us where it is that we're holding back. They teach us to perk up and lean in when we feel we'd rather collapse and back away. They teach us to perk up and lean in when we'd rather collapse and back away. I find myself doing that all the time. There's a little irritation, there's a little situation. Nice, have at it, see you later. <laughs> you know? And I'm, re <laughs> I'm really trying to do that, you know, to lean in and say, take a deep breath. And what is here as my gift for my next unfoldment to open up? She said, they're like messengers that show us with terrifying clarity. Oh, that's good. <laughs> Isn't it? <laughs> terrifying clarity. Because they're so clear that we can't escape it. That's what terrifies us. They're like messengers that show us with terrifying clarity exactly where we're stuck. This very moment is the perfect teacher, and lucky with, for us, it's with us wherever we are. And there's just more and more good juicy stuff. But when, uh, when I spent the 20 years in the international headquarters at Mount Washington uh, in Yogananda's serving Yogananda's work. One of the first, actually, one of the first things that you learn there, for, and men learn or practice seeing every woman as an aspect of Divine Mother. Because Yogananda said, if you can do that, you'll purify your gaze. And, but it works not just for men. If we see every woman, even the really little ones, as aspects of the Divine Mother, then we'll just, we can see the beauty, the grace, the wisdom, the intelligence, the fortitude, the, just the, all of it. 
And for those of you who didn't have a kind and gracious and nurturing mother, you get that opportunity to get unstuck in all the beliefs and the protection that you did to close your heart. And you get to heal it. And I, I recommend that you take m m the month of May, the month of Divine Mother, to heal your heart and look to Divine Mother in the feminine. And of course, he said to look to the Divine Father in the masculine. But um, that's, that's not as difficult for us women as, as looking at the, the purity of a woman for a man. Just my experience. So we can raise the vibration of our consciousness by looking at each other. We've been in this community practicing looking at each other as family. Family. The more diverse people that people come in, the more I love it because everyone is my family. And so now let's look at everyone as aspects of the cosmic mother and to stretch it even further, even men, because men are being called to develop their feminine side and we're seeing a lot of the young ones, young boys coming in with very open hearts. It's beautiful. You know, as a yoga teacher, it's, I also see it reflected in their hips. Back in the day when I, then mostly if you, back in the day when I started teaching yoga, men could not do pigeon, kapatasana. It would, it would just utter pain. Men are coming in now, <laughs> open hips. You know, freeing up the second chakra, freeing up the creativity, being willing to go in a new direction. What's the new definition of, of manhood? The new direction, definition of womanhood. I hope it's respect. Respect. And uh, so I'll close with a thought, another thought from Pema Chodron. She said that we should look at ourselves. And we, we do that as, as yogis, right? We're taught from the get-go to introspect. It's the first line of the Gita about introspection. But she said, look at yourself with clarity and kindness. And let's look at each other the same way too. Now from our perspective. <laughs> our? <laughs> which is our perspective. Because <coughs> we have two natures, masculine and feminine, in each of us. So when we're even though we're in one of the other bodies this time around, we are built with both natures, we're masculine and feminine, and when those two are perfectly balanced, so that's the aura, then we are complete. We have a great shot then. When we have that tenderness of the divine feminine, the compassion, the purity of the divine feminine, and then the strength, let's say, and the protective quality for truth and for the beautiful soul qualities of a man, then we're going to discover our soul, that we're neither man nor woman. But I remember as a good Catholic boy, we went to, because uh, I grew up in, in North Hollywood, so our Catholic church on, on May, what is it, they, that May, for what, for Mother's, Divine Mother, uh, Mother Mary Day? It's in May sometime, I don't mm -hmm. know if it changes, but we, we went, it was a, a, went to the Coliseum uh, downtown. And that call seemed to hold 100,000 people. And there were 100,000 people honoring Mother Mary that day. I mean, I will never forget it. I had to go, because that's a huge Coliseum, right, in, uh, in Los Angeles. And I remember I climbed all the way up to the very top and sat up there. And then when it was time for everyone to light candles, I'll just never forget that sight of everyone lighting a candle to the Divine Mother. And so there's such beautiful, beautiful traditions, really, you know? Um, they lose their, their power when we forget what is underneath it, the spirit of it, and we're just doing something because, well, in my case, is what the, what the kids did that day. We all went. Mm -hmm. But still, it was a profound experience for me. And, uh, and so Ma May is extremely Divine, divine Mother Month. It's just an extreme Divine Mother Month. You, some of you may have been feeling m a little more awareness, connection to your hearts since we entered May. 
Some of you may be, may be stirring up emotional things a little bit more. Maybe some of those old addictions that have been at bay are also flaring up because this is all tied into the emotional, physiological, mental, but most importantly, that aspect of our heart. Aspects. So all of it or some of it or just the Divine Mother part, it doesn't matter because all of it, all of it is a teacher. There's just one teacher and that's love. You know, Trish and I are just noting that, you know, our son-in-law sets up the camera, Ron, and he usually sits right back there. And, and he was away for two days with the guys. They had a little camp out. God, 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 just, they went out and had fun and now he's back. But our granddaughter, Taylor, hasn't left his side. You can't put a piece of paper between her and her daddy. Hasn't <laughs> left she missed him. his side since, she, since he came back. So don't tell me love isn't the glue of this universe. And tell me there isn't this beautiful, for lack of a better word, but it's a no, divine hierarchy where there is one supreme divine magnetic force and there's one supreme force that is outgoing force. What do you call that? The, the masculine force? Dynamic. Dynamic. The outgoing force that creates creation and then the love that draws it back and the outgoing and the love. Tell me that that force isn't alive and well. Mm -hmm. If an example like that can happen between father and daughter, it is too impeccably beautiful. Mm -hmm. So ask yourself today and during this month, so take a day at a time, what lessons are there for me in today? And it might not be that you're with, so maybe you, you're gonna decide to spend some downtime alone. But then that becomes even the best teacher because your thoughts and feelings are teaching you something. And please don't go into the analysis mode because we're talking about opening the heart. And a lot of people analyze their thoughts and feelings. And when they're not like the way they want them to be or the way they're told that to be or the way the catechism said they ought to be, they, they, get, they get depressed or they get indifferent or they just say, you know what, I'm going to do something else because I don't get it. No, because love doesn't look at it that way. We have to just know that this teacher, on all levels, is love. And I know you would, I know you like to think and say that love is all there is, right? I know that you might even have that as a belief. That the reality, and then just just remove the words for the deities, what the Hindus call their deity, what the Muslims call their deity deity, what the Christians call their deity or the supreme force. Just remove those words because they can really get you analytical or stir up some things. And just say love. Just say love is the only teacher. And you know what's incredible about this creation that God put in place with that dynamic force and boom, out come you and me as a ray, as a perfect spark of the infinite spirit, as we sit here right now, we are infinite spirit, we are a spark and that big flame of spirit, we are absolutely like this and those flames just shoot out because of this dynamic force and that same quality of supreme love is calling that little spark of yours back into unity consciousness, you know, back into, I don't know, more kindness with yourself, more forgiveness with yourself, more compassion with yourself, First. But isn't it interesting that being alone with thoughts and feelings can really be the supreme teacher. Good, bad, or indifferent, those thoughts and feelings can be. And the reason why this is such a great creation is because <coughs> everybody, at the moment of transition, this is my belief, but I choose to know that my beliefs become my reality because source is everything sources everything to everyone and what you believe you manifest in the three worlds and beyond the three worlds yogananda even goes to the point that let's say you don't like like kuan yin you don't relate to kuan yin mother mary no you know jesus no buddha not really and all and you just don't have a concept yet that you can say wow now that it, as far as a, as a concept goes because spirit is beyond concepts beyond your ability to have a conception, right? Mm -hmm. But Yogananda said this, whatever you drum up, drum up something, an aspect that, of source that you can say, wow, I love that. 
I love you, God. I love you, Source. In that aspect, <coughs> that aspect will form for you and will be there the moment your soul leaves the body again in this life. That is what will appear to you. So there are no boundaries and no box and no this is the way when it comes to love. The way of love is the way that you can most relate to it, is the way that you most can surrender to it, is the way that you most can open your heart to it by learning from your thoughts and feelings and all the teachers in your life, right? But every single soul, and this is my belief, when they leave their body, they are going to have to a greater or lesser degree an experience of the soul reality. Whether that is a moment in the light or longer, depending on, on how much we've learned in an incarnation. Moment or longer embraced by this infinite love that is unbelievable. No words to describe it. I mean, every fiber of your being is embraced. And not only do you feel like you are loved, but you realize you are loved. And that's happened to you and me in however many lifetimes we've had and transitions we've had. We have seen it crystal clear and felt it crystal clear that you are never judged for one thought, feeling, action, behavior that you ever had as a human being. In fact, in that book, Proof of Heaven, that neurologist said seven days, his brain went, went dead. So he couldn't even later say that this was just some kind of phenomenon that happened in my culture. He didn't have any. And he came back and he said when he had that experience of the light, an atheist. So it's not like he was like a devoted soul to the light. He's like, no, that doesn't, that's not real. This is real right here, baby. Right? And whatever we can do with our reason and whatever we can do is in the goodness of our hearts, that's it. But he had this proof, first of all, that he was immeasurably loved, as I just mentioned. Second, that he never did anything wrong and that he never can do wrong. Embrace them that light and embrace them that love. And never did anything wrong, never can do anything wrong. And thirdly, that light and love was telling him, have no fear, have no fear. Just have no more fear. And to whatever degree you and I have had that experience so many times, where this drama and this tr tragedy and sometimes fleeting happiness on this planet is washed away in an instant when we're embraced by the reality. In an instant. So you know what the yogis figured out? They intuited this. And your intuition may say, yeah, I, I, I mean, choose your beliefs. Because whatever you believe is going to come to pass. <laughs> right? Choose them. Choose the best ones that light up your day to day. Wow, I am not a sinner after all, <laughs> right? Oh, you mean I don't have to feel bad about how I'm living my life? No, absolutely not. There's nothing wrong with the way you're living your life. It may be keeping you from being happier. It may keep you from feeling more open in your heart if you're not learning from the way that you're out of tune with life or getting in tune, whatever. But there's nothing wrong. You have not done anything wrong. You are absolutely precious and beautiful because, you know, there's a quality of the love that I really like, and it's called forgiveness. It's called forgiveness. It's the same thing. It's one and the same thing as love. And so is compassion. They're all wrapped up in that one supreme reality called love. So instantly, now, before you even have a thought that may take you out of tune with your divine nature, is forgiven. You are completely forgiven now for everything you've ever said, done, or think, or perpetrated. I mean, male body and female body, you are completely erased, clean slate right now. So the yogi said, wait a minute. I'm not going to wait to my transition again to experience that. I am going to learn to quiet myself, do the best I can with improving myself, 
attuned to the cosmic laws so that I can have that experience while I'm in the body. While I have all those funky beliefs and negative attitudes and habits and things and prejudices, likes and dislikes going, I am going to prove to myself that I am loved right now. That I am forgiven right now. That I have the ability, not after years of spiritual training and discipline, but it will take that as well, to be the most compassionate person on the planet. I am going to discover that while in the body. And you know, that's called wisdom because that's the way the divine has set it up. It's nice to get a little reprieve when we leave these bodies, but you know, you get a little rest on the other side and the next thing you know, Wah! <laughs> Precious little baby, you know, and everyone's smiling. Oh, cutie, 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 cutie. And you're going, <laughs> not, not again. You know? <laughs> not again. Oh, man. I was so big. I was so large. I had no worries. You know, I was just embraced by everything. I didn't have to do anything on my own. And now, where am I? <laughs> that's a big, that's a big incarnation. You have to know is so important. This breath, oh, MG. I can't tell you how important this breath is. And this moment to draw closer and open your heart, because the children was saying, hey, there's one lesson to learn. Open your heart. Open your heart. I don't care what you're thinking, feeling, or doing. Please be kind on that level of your life right now, because the head's going to get in there and make it wrong, just like that. And then make others wrong. That's the opposite of truth. That's the opposite of reality. When right now, you and I can have a day of days, because it's the month of May. It's the month of Divine Mother. And such is her grace and love that Yogananda said, if you love her with all your heart, she wipes out your karma. She'll wipe it out. Last week I talked about that second chakra, and maybe it was kind of in preparation for this Sunday, that second chakra which holds so much vital energy, so much creative energy. That if we, as Trisha mentioned, the training in the ashram for us guys was we, we never looked at the nuns, you know? In the ashram, we never looked at the nuns in the eyes. The nuns never looked at us in the eyes. If we were in a meeting, we looked over the shoulder, we looked to the side, but we never looked at each other in the eye. Because you talk about magnetism there, right? And it wasn't like to be impolite. It wasn't to make the opposite sex wrong or that the opposite sex that sex was, you know, maybe looking at the physical part of you. No, it was just pure and simple training to redirect habits of lifetime, of seeing just a physical being rather than that beautiful Divine Mother or that Heavenly Father in each man and woman, child and friend or foe that we come across. But what great training. It got, for us guys, it got a little bizarre. Because the nuns, they would start looking down to the ground maybe 50 yards before they saw you. And we had a lot of little standing jokes, you know. Like, oh, geez, man. They don't have to start looking down 50 yards from us. <laughs> but boy, they were down and, and around. Just like that. If we were just, if the public was there, then it's just, just act normal, right? <laughs> just act normal. But even as ministers, when we would be greeting the congregation at the end of sermons and, and public services, we would still learn to look just off the shoulder, just off the side of the head. Although now, now I'm making up for lost time. Now it's like my immersion in love. Now my immersion in love, we, we go direct, you know. We, 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 because of the group collective joy consciousness that we build, I have not seen yet, and this is the grace of God, and it's the, it's the power of each soul when it comes together to just be a soul and to just be happy and to feel the joy and to feel the love. There is a grace element that kicks in and the purity element that kicks in. And honestly, Steve was there just recently for five days and some of the others of you, and there's just this beautiful rapport soul to soul. 
And it feels so freeing, whether you're looking into the eyes of, of a male, eyes of a female, but there's just the soul there. And it's so freeing to be free from male and female. I don't care if it's for a split second. It is just absolutely so <coughs> freeing. So I want to thank all of you so, so much. Because a moment that you have with your heart open to feel how much you loved, to feel how much you've forgiven, which then, then takes you right in this moment into a higher place of consciousness where you dial into the reality. It lifts you up immediately that moment you are kind, compassionate, and forgiving with yourself, your thoughts and feelings and actions. <coughs> it and when that happens to you or me, it's like the sparks fly. That soul spark in you just chew. It flies across the network of all hearts, the omnipresence of this love and this flame of spirit or this fire of spirit. Automatically, it sparks everyone's heart and everyone's heart gets a little boost. Mm -hmm. The moment that you are able to be kind, forgiving, and compassionate with yourself. And the way that I look at it now in my meditations, I do the near-death experience. It's the best approach to meditation I've discovered in 40-something years. I have a near-death experience. In other words, I die to love. I die to Divine Mother's arms. I die and I go back to all those favorite things that I have read in near-death experiences and I take them deep in my heart and I am without body. I'm in the reality for a long, 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 long time just getting saturated with what I'm telling you this morning so that when I'm back in the body, now I feel more like who I really, really am. I feel more like a soul. But thank you each for those moments that you have kindness, compassion, and forgiving yourself across the board because I know that's what I call grace. That is why I'm happier today. That is why I can say these things to you today because of who each of you are and who each of you are becoming. And I'll close with this quote from Leo Tolstoy. He said, I sought God, but my God I could not see. I sought my brother and sister, but my brother and sister eluded me. No, I sought my soul, but my soul eluded me. I sought my brother and sister, and I found all 